If I think about what Bitcoin is, it essentially is digital gold. It's a scarce asset that is held with the anticipation that it will preserve value relative to the destruction of the underlying currency. Yep. Right? A bar of gold, an ounce of gold, equals an ounce of gold forever and always. Sure. You weigh it, it stays the same. It doesn't change. It doesn't grow, doesn't change, doesn't, doesn't dissipate, stays an ounce of gold. But wait, an ounce of gold is different. For 5,000 years, a single ounce buys a fine person's suit, right? From the days when the Knights Templar were running around Spain and Portugal, where I just was on vacation, okay, 2,000 years ago, to today, a fine person's suit, one ounce of gold. Yeah. Money has gone up and down and up and down. Same thing with Bitcoin, right? One Bitcoin yeah. is one Bitcoin. But we don't price Bitcoin in Bitcoin. We price Bitcoin in dollars and euros and yen and lira. I would say all the time, there's never been a bear market in Bitcoin in Turkey. Because the Turkish lira has True. gone straight yeah. down. There's yeah, never been sure. a bear market in Venezuelan bolivars. Yeah. Not once, yeah. right? The value of Bitcoin in bolivars just keeps going up because we're devaluing the currency. So the role of Bitcoin is precisely the role exactly. of gold. It's a store of value that preserves purchasing power relative to the destruction. And here's the crazy thing. Larry Fink said this the other day. Yeah, just the other day. Yeah. He said that Bitcoin can protect you from devaluation of the Huge. currency, of the dollar. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's insane I mean, to hear BlackRock like, wow. making that kind of statement. Yeah. Yeah. That's a wow. Crazy. It, if I say it or you say it, that's fine because we're crazy conspiracy theories, conspiracy theory guys. But for him, you know, sitting in the chair of, of the king. Bitcoin is digital gold and the best way of protecting your wealth against the destruction of the underlying currency. That is the message out from not only hedge fund founder and manager Mark Yusko, but also the most powerful man in the world, the CEO of asset manager BlackRock, Larry Fink. For those that missed it, Larry Fink just this week appeared on CNBC and he stated that over the past five years, more and more institutional investors are asking BlackRock about Bitcoin and crypto and he also said that Bitcoin can transcend the devaluation of the dollar. This is insane as Larry Fink is truly the king of asset managers and would know the sentiment of institutional and sophisticated investors better than anybody. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Mark Yusko explains his investing strategy going into the next bull cycle and how to best take advantage of it. Also guys, remember to subscribe to my daily 5 minute crypto newsletter for expert predictions, on-chain data breakdowns and breaking news all for free. Click the first link in the description, enter your email and join 2000 others to becoming a better crypto investor right now. And if you don't like it, I will personally send you a whole dollar so you have absolutely nothing to lose. Now, here's Mark Yusko with his crypto outlook. So, you know, we run a venture fund and, and we invest in the ABCDs of the digital age. Yep. AI, blockchain, chips and data. Yep. And so anything that touches those four pillars, so think of four Roman pillars holding up a, a temple, anything that, that touches those four pillars, we want to own. And miners, definitely. Um, exchanges, definitely. Software yep. and tools, definitely. You know, AI is really just a form of software. It's just a tool. Blockchain technology is a better form of storing value. Um, chips, right? We're going to have ASICs and, and AI focused chips. Those are going to be great investments. And then data. Ultimately, it's all about data, right? The future yeah, of digital yeah. assets is about how we store and process data, how we protect privacy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you think about what we're talking about here is the internet basically revolutionized commerce and media, right? In the old days, media was controlled by governments, state owned and state controlled, and the internet busted that wide open. So anyone could be a journalist. If I want information, I don't have to wait for the New York Times. I can watch a TikTok or, or watch a Periscope on Twitter, find out what's going on in Argentina, 
much faster. What, what blockchain does, it, it takes us away. I, I'll give you a quick history lesson. I, 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 I knew this, but I didn't know exactly and I, until this, I just got back from this vacation. So uh, I always said that the Medici's invented the modern banking system, fractional reserve banking, but they borrowed, stole the idea from these, these monks. And I actually didn't know which monks until last week. I was in Portugal and the guy explained to me that the Knights Templar, the Order of Christ, invented fractional reserve banking. The Medici's borrowed that idea and created the modern banking area that we have today. But it goes all the way back to these Portuguese monks. And what they found is they would hold gold for people. People would go off to war and never come back. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, we got all this gold. We might as well lend it out and earn some interest on it. Mm -hmm. And it snowballed into, you know, modern fractional reserve banking. Pretty amazing. Yeah. And so yeah. that was all based on ledgers. In the olden, olden days, I lent you money. I wrote in my ledger and you come back to pay me. I'm like, oh, Paul, you know, you, you think you owe me a hundred. It says 200 right here. Cause I'm an unscrupulous <laughs> guy. I changed the ledger. Yeah. So you're like, well, that, that sucks. So I'm going to keep a ledger and you keep a ledger and we'll ask the Medici's, the benevolent Medici's to yeah. make sure the ledgers match. Yeah, they were the, now they I'm were a the gatekeeper. unscrupulous guy. I go to the Medici's, I say, hey guys, I'm gonna change my number to 200. Paul's gonna say 100, I'll give you 50. And they're like, done, easy. So that you come back to pay and mine says 200 and you're like, hey, Medici's, it should be 100. I'm sorry, Paul, you must've made a mistake. <laughs> well, now we have a third ledger. We don't need the Medici's. We don't need JP Morgan. We don't need Beautiful. the global banking system. We have a third ledger, immutable, permanent, and we're going to replace trust, which is what this 800 year system is built on with yep. truth. Blockchains give us truth. And that's why one, I'm so excited about this Two, It's why I'm gonna spend the rest of my career focused on this. And it's three, why sure. we're just at the beginning of this adoption and this disruption. And yes, the incumbents want to preserve what they have. Seven no trillion. Doubt. Seven yeah. trillion, this is a big number, seven trillion dollars every year leaks out of your account and my account and everyone else's account into the banks, brokerage, insurance companies, title, all the things that ensure trust. <sighs> Tokenization of, of assets of value broadly. So mm -hmm. stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities, real estate, private businesses, Anything that can be owned, anything that can be titled, I actually believe, and there are people who will disagree with me, but I, I believe that anything that can be titled will eventually be an entry on a blockchain, just an entry in this permanent immutable ledger. And that's what a token is, right? A token is not a little piece of gold or a little, I mean, that's not what token is and you know, media makes it look like that. But uh, a token is simply an entry on a ledger that gives you or I title to some property. And that property yeah. could be anything. Now, at this point, it's been things like Bitcoin or Ethereum or the token, the line items themselves. We own a piece of the computing network that is the Bitcoin blockchain or the computing network that is the Ethereum blockchain. You know, what right. people don't realize, I always hear all the time, you know, it's Bitcoin, not blockchain. Bitcoin is a blockchain. Yeah. And what you own is a piece of the most powerful computing network the world has ever seen. Yep. 1,500 yep. times more powerful than the CERN supercomputer. And it is so powerful because of proof of work. And it's so immutable. And so, uh, and I believe all high value assets will eventually list and find themselves on the Bitcoin blockchain. That's why ordinals are so important and, and a bunch of other things. But ultimately, Ethereum can have a role, Solana can have a role, other things can have a role too. What I what I don't know, Paul, and, and, and I've thought a lot about this and I, I don't know that I have to know, is the internet's pretty simple. It didn't used to be. There used to be 80 different protocols and it was very messy and, and now we have five, basically. 
right? We got, you know, got inter internet protocol at the bottom, the, the base layer, then TCP IP kind of controls all of that on how it, and it, it exchanges. And that's the base layer. Then we have file coin on top of that. I mean, I'm sorry, FTP for files. Then we have HTTP for websites, SMTP for email, and then www. It kind of ties it all together. If I use that same framework, I can make a case that Bitcoin is like TCP IP. It's the base layer. Filecoin is like FTP. Ethereum is like the www. And then we duke it out for the HTTP and the SMTP. Is that Polkadot or you know Cosmos or Solana or Avalanche? Don't really know. Somebody's like, no, 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 no. It's, good. it's one chain to rule all chains, Bitcoin. So it's Bitcoin, Lightning, L3, L4 that haven't even been invented yet. That's more like how money functions. So for money, mm -hmm. I can see that, right? Gold is the base layer then Fedwire, then ACH, then Visa MasterCard, you know, L0 to L3. Okay, I could see Bitcoin, Lightning, L3, L4, and something replaces MasterCard and Visa for the money network. But for the total computing network, I don't know. I kind of like Bitcoin at the base, Ethereum as the www dot, and then okay. some other L1s that, that have a role. So there's Mark Yusko and his crypto investing strategy for the upcoming bull cycle and how he's looking to maximize the potential benefits. Echoing sentiments from Larry Fink, the CEO of the world's largest asset manager BlackRock, Bitcoin continues to prove its role as digital gold, a reliable store of value against the devaluation of the dollar. Yusko's insights coupled with Fink's remarks underscore the increasing interest from institutional investors in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. This shows a dramatic shift in perception and acceptance highlighting the potential and value of digital assets in today's financial landscape. If you've stuck around to this point in the video, you're already well on your way to becoming a better informed crypto investor. To stay ahead in the dynamic world of crypto, remember to subscribe to my daily 5-minute crypto newsletter. You'll get expert predictions, on-chain data breakdowns, and the latest breaking news delivered straight to your inbox every single day. It's free and you'll join a community of over 2,000 crypto enthusiasts just like yourself. Click the first link in the description, enter your email, and start your journey towards becoming a more savvy crypto investor right now. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best.